In this week's episode, I use a Tinkercad circuit assembly to create this walking robot. I'll show you how I did it on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week because of the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. Please consider joining them and you'll get special access to ChepClub.com. This whole thing started when I was looking at the Tinkercad circuit assemblies. I did the LED one in a previous video, and now I'm looking at this spin circuit. Now, Tinkercad shows that you can make an animal with spinning arms, but I saw it as a potential to make this walking robot. So there's one part, which is the actual 3D print, and another part, which is the cutout. So I used the cutout to build my robot, and there's two main pieces. One is this cam, which has a post that's offset, and then a slot to fit over the motor itself. And that just will push onto the motor just like this. Then I made the leg. The leg is just a bunch of blocks put together with feet and then a hole to go over that post on the cam. So as this thing spins, it should lift the leg and then place it back down just like you're walking. Now I made mirror images of these for the other side, so now I have a set on both sides. But the key was to make the feet more than halfway to the center of the motor. So if I take one away, it should balance just like this. So let's put that back. So as these spin, because they're offset 180 degrees, this thing should just lift its feet and walk as the motor turns. There's really three STL files, the cam, the feet, and then the body. And I'm going to use my Filament Friday filament. You can get it now at Amazon.com. I'll put a link for it in the description below. So the first thing I did was printed out the cams, and then I got out a motor, a geared motor that I had, and I soldered wires to it, a positive and a negative. And then I tried out the cams to see if they'd fit, and they did. They fit nicely. In fact, they could be just a little bit tighter, but it's going to work. They slide on on both sides, and I mounted them 180 degrees away from each other. So this is the way they'll spin. Now the motor, I just wanted to test this out, so I pushed the motor into where it should go and brought the wires just to the side, which is not really the proper way to do this. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to test it with a power supply. So here's the arms that I printed in a black filament, Friday filament, and I'm going to use these brass screw and washer to hold in place. And I made the post hollow so I could screw these screws right into them. These are self-tapping screws. So once I got that in place, the legs are still loose, so this thing will pivot. And there you can see it is balanced. So now I'll put the second leg in place, and this thing's ready to test. I used a power supply set to 3 volts, connected positive and negative to the wires of the motor. And when I turned on the power supply, this thing walked. Now the wires are kind of throwing off the weight a little bit, but it seems to be working. Now if I reverse the wires, this thing should walk backwards. And sure enough, it walks backwards. Now that I can see it's working, I want to make this battery operated. Now the design didn't have a hole at the bottom, so I drilled two holes rather than reprint it so I could shove the motor in and bring the wires out to the bottom. The design is really built to work with a battery box with a switch. And I didn't have time to get that, and I got all the pieces. So I just found a switch, marked where the holes were, and then drilled through so I could just screw a switch in place. I found some small screws that would fit the switch, and this worked out perfectly. So once I got those screwed in place, the next step was the battery. I wanted to use two quad A batteries, and I have these battery shield boards. I have a lot of them. So I just took it to my cutter, cut two of them off, and then I'll just solder these clips on it, and I'll have a 3-volt battery holder with traces already connecting the two batteries. So this will work out perfect and should fit nicely inside the case. So I soldered on the clips, and that gave me the battery holder frame that the batteries will actually clip into. And then I soldered a red wire to the positive side of this battery holder. I clamped it into my 3D printed clamp, and then I soldered the negative wire of the motor to the negative side of the battery holder. Then that little short wire I put on the battery holder, I soldered to the switch. And then the red wire from the motor, I soldered to the other side of the switch. To hold the batteries in place, I used double-sided foam tape, and then just squished this down inside the 3D print. It would have been less work to just buy their battery holder, but I like the way this turned out with my little battery board. I popped in the Quad A batteries, gives me 3 volts. I tested my wiring by flipping on the switch and the motor turned perfectly. So then I reassembled it and gave it its first test walk across my bench. It seemed to want to turn a little bit, so I stopped it and did it the other direction to see if that was consistent. 
It seemed to walk straight and then all of a sudden it would take a sharp turn. So I decided to try it on a bigger open space. And that seemed to help a little bit, but this thing still wants to turn every once in a while to the right. If you come up with your own design of Tinkercad, let me know in the comments below. And if you're a Chep Club member, all the files will be shared in the file section. If you like this project, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month to Chep Club via Patreon. And if nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.